What is going on, Nessessians? 8x Gaming here with a simple question. Can I beat Nessess if I was stranded in a desert? Well, before I get started, I want to talk about what that entails. I will need to defeat the Fallen Wizard in the Deep Desert to complete the game. However, there's going to be a few complications. One, I can't get to the Deep without a Pirate Captain, and I will need to defeat at least one Evil's Protector. Two, Food will be an issue as the desert is a dry and barren wasteland with nothing but coconuts, cactus and maybe one roaming ostrich that unfortunately can't be cooked for chicken wings. Number 3. Weapons and armor will be very limited so I'll have to be creative in what I come up with. So to combat these limitations, I want to put in place one exception. If there are no spawns of a mysterious portal, I will be allowed to summon one evil's protector and when the time comes, I will summon one pirate captain for a deep ladder. As for food, weapons and armor, well, let's just say I'll have to pull out some pretty big brain strats. With all that out of the way, let's jump into it. To start off, let's create our character and our world. Randomize the seed a ton and then off we go. I had to do this a few times before I realized the odds of me getting a desert spawn are pretty slim if at all possible. So I decided I spawned into a random seed, went to the nearest desert, got the global coordinates and spawned myself into the desert. Upon spawning in, I found myself alone with nothing. There was an elder, but he was homeless and looking for a settlement, which I did not have and I could not provide him. I was gonna have to do this without a settlement. This meant not getting any help from the elder rewards or hired settlers. I had to do all the manual work on my own. So that out of the way, I quickly scoured the edges of the island top to bottom to hopefully find an ostrich. I was blessed and luck was on my side as I found one. This is a huge win for me as it's a crazy fast mount and I'll need all the help I could get. So I chased it down and was slowly getting hit by hit off on it every time it stuck its head in the ground. If I can't see you, you can't see me. However, that didn't work and I successfully got the Suspicious Feather Ostrich Mount. Continuing around the island, I was lucky enough to obtain one mysterious portal from a surface chest alongside some torches, bombs and a shoddy copper pitchfork. My desert life had started with a negative weapon. The mysterious portal was a big win as this meant I could use it later on to defeat the evil's protector and get me some very useful items that would allow me to progress much further. With the surface explored, I chopped all the trees down, some cactus and made myself some torches and a pickaxe to go exploring. I also knew I would need some food and more wood later, so I replanted all the coconut trees I found and all the tree saplings. So with my pickaxe in hand, I headed down into the caves. Well, that was pretty much a waste of resources because I completely forgot that you can't mine sandstone or quartz with a wooden pickaxe. I had to come up with another plan to help me get what I needed. And what I needed was a ton of quartz and gold. You're probably wondering why gold and why quartz? Well, the first boss will be difficult with no armor. So I needed something that I can use to attack from a distance. And this is where the gold comes into place. I will be creating myself a golden bow. This bow will help carry me to victory, not only on the first boss, but two other bosses as well and then the quartz will be needed for a much needed armor upgrade so I can defeat the pirate captain. I had made myself a great plan. I would go down the ladder, explore, break everything and then head to the surface and move my ladder to a new location and then rinse and repeat until I had found all the items that would help me. Anything at all would help. I would need bombs, dynamite, potions and most importantly an air vessel trinket. It would be a must have for every future boss as it would allow me to dash three times in a row, drastically improving my survivability. This darn trinket though would cause me so much pain, but more on that later. So after only placing three ladders, I found a huge open cave, which pretty much gave me access to everything. It went on for pretty much the entirety of the cave system. However, traversing these caves was slow, very slow. I had a pitchfork with negative 15% damage and had to kite every enemy I found. So 
hours of exploring later, and many trips back to the surface to restock on torches and food, I had obtained everything except for that air vessel trinket. I had to explore the entirety of the cave, but with no luck, I just couldn't find it. I was starting to give up hope, and then I stumbled upon a treasure room. I knew I was confident enough to do this, and I knew that what I needed was probably in one of those chests. I had my noble steed and was ready to go. I headed down and carefully avoided the darts and zoomed my way across the spiked floors before they even got a chance to start. I had made it through, flicked the first lever and headed up, healed myself and went right back down to continue. Using my ostrich, I once again zoomed past the flying razor blades and decided to take some small damage to get to the other end of the dart and spike traps. If I hesitated, too many hits would kill me. So, with the next lever flicked, I once again headed up to the surface, healed, and came back down. Using the same tactics as before, I took a little bit of damage, but zoomed over the fire traps and the spike pits, and was left just one hit away from death. One dart could kill me. I couldn't even dare try to turn back to heal up, so I had to continue forward. If I had messed up on the spike maze, I was toast. Playing it safe at each safe zone, I made it through safely. I flicked the lever which opened me up to the last gauntlet. Using the ostrich tactic, I sped through and made it to the treasure room. I got a ton of gold that I didn't have anything to spend it on, but most importantly, I got the air vessel trinket and the ancient vulture boss summon. I was now ready to tackle almost all of the bosses that I needed to get me down into the deep caverns. So I returned to the surface with enough quartz for a full set of armor, enough gold for a bow, and some mismatched ores for some needed armor. It was now time to wait until nighttime to tackle the very first boss of this journey. I would only get one shot at this, so I'd have to make it count. I would be hoping for a melee or a ranged foci, but couldn't guarantee myself I'd get either. It was a 50-50 chance, and I'd just have to live with the outcome. It wasn't too tough of a battle, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to do the remainder without any damage boosting foci that I could safely utilize as I got myself the magic foci. Magic was a class I would not be using, but I ate the demon heart and obtained an extra 100 HP. This was huge, as I wouldn't get access to life quartz potions that would get me the remainder of my HP up to 300. I was going to have to do this all with 200 HP. So, with the demonic bars, I made myself a demonic workstation, as I'll need that later on, and equipped my Force of Wind trinket. With the demonic workstation created, I made myself a full set of quartz armor, increasing my defense from 19 to 38, doubling my defenses. I also converted some of my excess bronze, iron, and gold bars to create myself a demonic pickaxe and a demonic bow. Going into this challenge, that was my biggest oversight. I didn't realize that even a gold pickaxe wouldn't mine through sandstone, and just one evil's protector wouldn't get me enough bars to make a demonic pickaxe. But I completely forgot I could convert bars to demonic bars, and that would have saved me so much time earlier on. Nonetheless, I made it this far anyway. With my armor and bow, I set off to defeat the vulture. I headed out into the open desert, summoned it, and off I went. I was chasing two weapons, the vulture's bow, as this bow does piercing damage and would help tremendously against the worm or snake-like enemies that are found in the deep desert. It would prove to be a massive damage boost against the pirate captain. The other item I would like would have been the vulture's talent. This spear is nearly the best spear in the game and can compete with end-game weapons in terms of damage. However, it would really only prove useful in the Sage and Grit fight later on, or so I thought, but more on that later again. First kill down, and I have obtained the Vulture's Bow Drop. This would make hunting for the spear much easier, as the kills would be faster and safer. So off I went and tackled the Ancient Vulture a second time. This time, I obtained the rare Vulture's Mask, which really fit the desert theme, and I got the Vulture's Summon Weapon. Usually I'd be using a foci, but as I didn't have a good one, these vulture summons came in crazy handy later on. So back at it again for the third time, and this time round, I got the vulture's talent, the spear weapon. I had now obtained every single drop from the vulture and everything I needed 
With an upgraded bow, it was time to tackle the pirate captain, who had just washed ashore with his loyal crew. This fight would make or break my survival with his explosive hits, army of birds, and a crew of pirates equipped with aimbots. This was a tough fight and I had to play it very accurately, but in the end, my vulture's bow and arrows were no match for the pirate and his ship had been sunk. He'd only dropped some gold and a telescope and no sign of a ladder. This wasn't part of the plan, so let's pretend this is what happened instead. He had dropped a ladder, allowing me to venture even deeper into the desert's underground caves. This was going to be the toughest part of being stranded in the desert. I went down and this is when everything turned for the worst. I was doing so well and then the power creep happened. Things were hitting me like trucks and I got cornered trying to loot a chest and die. I had come so far and didn't want the run to end. I wanted to see if it was still possible to defeat the fallen wizard. So I picked myself up and went to get my gear back. However, on the way, I came across a chest that was reasonably close and decided, can I use dynamite to get myself through these walls? The answer was no. And I blew up the chest and was still out of reach of the items. I had to choose to leave them behind and get my gear and loot the chest. In that chest, I found an upgrade, the scrying mirror. This allowed me to have one extra summon, effectively doubling my summon damage and also found some tungsten bars and a dragon soul used for that second last boss. Whilst I was down here, I needed two main items, ancient bars and tungsten bars. So to get that, I needed to smash every single pot and vase down here. All the crates had to be destroyed, all for a small chance for them to drop some ancient or tungsten bars. I needed enough bars to craft two major items. Number one was the advanced workstation. This would allow me to make better trinkets. And two, the bone hilt. So I ran up and down each row looking for crates and pots to smash, gathering potions, greater health potions, and all sorts. After some time, I went back to my base as I ran out of torches, chopped my trees down, and replanted them. Then I made myself the advanced workstation with all the tungsten I found. I also managed to make myself a bone hilt. This gives amazing armor penetration, and can make even the worst weapons hit well and gave my vultures a huge damage boost as well. With the upgrades I had, I went back down, smashed a few more pots, found a few more small chests with nothing too exciting and returned back to base, except this time I had enough ancient bars to craft an item so good it would allow me to make all this possible. The ancient fossil pickaxe. This pickaxe allowed me to go down into the caves and break through the deep sandstone walls and obtain the loot I couldn't before. I ran back to the loot I had left behind, hoping it was still there. I got a resistance potion, which is huge, and another scrying mirror. Not so great, but that didn't stop me. I found a few more chests and snagged myself an antique rifle, which usually would be an amazing drop, but I couldn't use it as I had no bullets, and an enchanting scroll, which gave me plus 10 health. This was a huge buff, as I only had 200 HP to begin with. I also found a grand enchanting scroll, which would prove to be useful later on, and I also mined up some more ancient fossil ores, as I needed the full armor set. With the cave fully explored, I took to the surface, I crafted up two pieces of ancient fossil armor, as I didn't have enough for the full set, but I hoped and I prayed that it would be enough for the fights to come. Feeling brave, I headed down and decided to summon the almighty sage and grit, the two dragons of yin and yang. I prepared the arena and removed the pillars so that I won't get blocked or obstructed. With it all cleared out, I sacrificed the souls of the two dragons and the fight began. I figured I have a ton of dynamite, why not throw it out and get off some quick, easy damage. So I started throwing them around without even realizing I had ran on top of one of my own dynamites and was met with a swift death. This was the second death, but it still wasn't going to set me back. I had now just one dragon soul left and some potions. I was getting extremely low on supplies as well. I was sure I was going to get this win. I went down, sacrificed my last dragon soul, and started the battle. Things were going well. I had defeated half of each dragon, effectively killing one of them. And then, I got smacked about like they were playing catch with me. Dead for the third time with no more dragon souls, 
and a very limited supply of potions, I had to find another summon and prepare as this may be my last shot at this boss. So I went back into the tunnels and found myself some more ancient fossil ores. I returned to the surface with it and crafted the final piece of the armor. Not only does it provide better defense, but its set bonus allows me guaranteed critical hits for five seconds and allows me a massive damage boost. After creating the armor, I crafted myself a tungsten spear as this was a stronger spear that would allow me to hopefully defeat Sage and Crit. I had everything I needed except for a dragon soul and I had explored all of the corridors. I decided I had to do the one strategy that I always felt wasn't needed with this game and that was to dig strip mines and dig in straight lines. I started in lines and eventually I found a chest. This chest contained another dragon soul, potentially the last one down here. I had one more attempt. I was equipped now with a tungsten spear and full ancient fossil armor. This was potentially the most prepared I could be. There was nothing else I could upgrade. So I headed into the cave, I buffed up, I ate a carrot for some extra damage. This was going to be the fight. Everything that it came down to depends on this dragon soul. The problem with this boss is that it requires a dragon soul to fight, whereas the final boss, I could have as many attempts as I want. However, if I lost this one, I may not get another chance. Sage and Grit would never open up their lair for me, and I would never get to defeat the fallen wizard. I started the fight, and all things considered, this was a pretty clean attempt. I played it safe, I baited the attacks and used my special ability to get some big damage off. And then any time they circled, I hopped on my noble budget emu. So I'll let it play out. And this is how it turned out. With Sage and Grit defeated, they dropped the Dualism Bow. A bow that shoots two arrows at a time, and it was enchanted with a skillful enchantment. Probably some of the best luck I've had stranded on this desert. And the two dragons opened up the final chamber. There was one gauntlet left that was separating me between me and the fallen wizard. With hundreds of undead enemies, I had to go from one end to the other to get to the final arena. As I was exploring through, I found myself a temple pendant. This pendant gave me the ability to combine it with my air vessel to let me dash two extra times and get a 25% dash cooldown. This is a huge upgrade and would allow me to dodge even more. With the final upgrade completed, I went down, I looted all the chests for potions and items. However, luck was not on my side. Every single chest that had a weapon had a negative enchantment on it. Things weren't looking good, but even though it may have been chaotic, I made it through to the end. I was now face to face with the final boss. I had a handful of buff potions and just five greater health potions to beat him. I used my buff potions, I ate my carrot, I was ready. This is what it had all been working its way towards. I let loose a barrage of critical enchanted arrows to begin the fight, maximizing the element of surprise.
I got a ton of damage off quickly, but it was a sloppy start. I wasn't sure if I was going to win. I took way too much unnecessary damage. But I hid when I needed to, I took out his minions every time he spawned them, and I let my minions deal a ton of damage. It was a long fight and got pretty dicey at times. But I won. It was all over. I used the wizard sock and was teleported to a new island. A tiny island. Was it not over? But it didn't matter as this island I was surrounded by all sorts of beautiful animals and trees. It was a breath of fresh air to get out of the desert. I was no longer stranded and we made it off the island alive. If you followed me along this far, please give the video a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you loved it, and I hope to see you all again soon.